I'm Oliver the Shoe Man, and today we're going to be repairing slash resoling these Danner Packer boots. Hold on. I always forget to turn this on. There we go. So, Danner's. It's made in Portland, Oregon. Quality footwear, Portland, Oregon. Now, this is a gonna be a doozy trying to get this to go come back from the front it looks like it's a stitch down construction which means the this leather upper comes down and then folds out and then that's what gets stitched that's what you stitch the midsole and the sole to and then here in the back it looks like they just used the, the midsole as the edge so that's gonna be I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but once I get it taken apart, then I will better know. So let's get this thing taken apart. Gosh, man. They really did not want this heel to come off. <sighs> really high quality. Did They did not want that thing coming undone. Jeez Louise, man. Look at that. They got nails where did I put that? every single one of those holes had a nail in it and they have washers built into it so that when the nail goes in it kind of sinks the whole heel into it this is actually really cool then they have more nails holding the heel buck to the boot and then wood pegs holding the heel base together so that's you won't find that nowadays unless you're going to pay a lot of money for them. Um, that's what I'm looking for. I'm just trying to take these these nails out. Look how long. Oh my goodness. Jeez Louise. Hopefully by doing this, I will be able to take the heel block off fairly easy. That's the goal at least. Oh. I missed one nail. Ready. I'm just gonna do this. All right, now the heel block is taken apart. take this sole off see what we're gonna have to do My goodness, man. Oh, that's why, because there's nails. They have more nails in the shank 
I was wondering why I couldn't cut through it. Now, I was cutting like this before. I had this hand right here, right? I had the knife going like that. And one slip, and it went like that. And you see that scar right there? That. Like an L. And it's not like it just cut in an L. From there to there, there's a flap of skin that just, that just opened up. Oh my goodness, that hurt like hell. I don't, I'm more careful now. Well, I should have been more careful. But, yeah, be careful with knives. They, they cut you, definitely. It could have been a lot worse, but I thank God I was okay. So just be careful. Try not to cut yourselves. All right. There's the sole. Let's get these nails out of here. Now take the take the mid leather midsole off. Oh, this is gonna be a pain in the butt. I can already tell. Wow. Wow, wow. Would you look at that mess? That's the footbed. This piece right here. Then I believe you have the lining right here that's supposed to come in, fold under, and glue down. Then you have now the leather uppers, which you can see is all just one piece. That folds out. You kind of get a better look at how that's done. So I gotta clean the threads, clean all the nails out, and then I gotta figure out the plan of attack with these boots. I know what type of sole I want to put on there. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna do it. Do I want to change it up a little bit as far as the construction goes? Do I just want to secure everything back to itself? And do it like it was originally? I don't know. We will see, we will see. Alright, I'll figure this out. Alright, so at this stage, we have the footbed out of the shoe. Took all the threads out. Hold on. There I go. Took all the threads out and stripped and cleaned the uppers. There's a big difference. I'm still not done yet. Um, but you can see. All the threads are out. And the footbed's out. Lining's not too bad. Doesn't look at all really bad. What I used to clean was this concoction of Angelus Easy Cleaner, Bone Tech, and some hand soap as a degreaser. And then I used a little nylon brush. This has some copper bristles in there too. So you, you just spray it on and you brush it and then take a paper towel or a towel and do that and then the rest 
I did with some thinner. So you can still see, I let it dry. Still see some, there's some dark spots there. But man, whoever wore this, like, beat the hell out of it. But it's a work boot, it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna do one more, like, coat of stripping it with some thinner. And then we will be on to dyeing the leather. One thing I did want to show you, since this was a, since this is a stitch down construction, which when that leather comes down and folds out, and then gets stitched down, after so many times of resoling the shoe, because each time you have to sand the edges flush, and you, you always touch that part right there, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually, you can't restitch it because it gets so um, so small. There's nothing to stitch to. And then you also have this problem where it's actually ripped right there. So I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm going to recraft these in a th little bit different way than actually just gluing it down and stitching it on top. But we will get to that later. So let's go ahead and strip this and then I'll see you guys when we're about to dye it. Okay, so we got it stripped down. That I've already started dying, but you get the picture. Here is the other one, untouched. And so you can see that I got quite a bit of the color off. There was a lot of dirt and grime and all that lovely stuff. So I've already started dying the front. I took some walnut Phoebe's dye and Phoebe's red dye. I mixed it up here in the little concoction. All right, so yeah, I mixed it in this little concoction here, and now just taking a dauber and putting the first coat on there. And this creates sort of like a dark brown, reddish tint to it, similar to what they had in the beginning. You can see the tongue is what I'm kind of shooting for. So it's very similar maybe a little bit darker to to hide the gashes and scratches these boots had but I'll do one coat let it dry and I'll probably do another coat because you can see it's kind of light and you can still see some streaks and light dark spots and you don't want that you want it all to be one consistent color. I'm just getting the inside right here. Make sure it's all one color. And then I'll do the tongue right now. see it's still light but I gotta let it dry and then I'll do a second coat on there and hopefully it'll get a little darker the back I just dyed it it's dark right now just because it's wet but as it dries it'll lighten up to that color so I gotta let it dry do a couple more coats and then we'll start redoing the bottoms so at this point we have the uppers all conditioned, re-dyed. There you go. I put some polishes on there, some creams, other conditioners. I'll put some more on there, but this is enough for the, the first coat at least. Um, so here we have the footbed nailed back in. Now this, with they were going from the manufacturer building it. They would take these leather uppers, stretch them over, they glue this part, which is the lining, down to the footbed, and then flare this piece out to stitch it down, hence the stitch down construction. But you see, let's see, where is it? It's right there. There's a little bit of tear there, and there's not much to stitch the new sole on. 
And that's the problem with these style shoes. Once you sand that down or you wear that down, you can't really flare it back out again and have it look nice and stitch it back down. So here's what I did. I took the footbed, I added some gemming, and instead of flaring them out, I'm gonna tuck them underneath, stitch it on, and stitch a new welt on. This is a storm welt. You see, because it's got that little ridge there, that little hump, that's called the storm welt. And I added a piece of leather in between the lining and the outer leather, just as a, um, a support, because the lining is also, they cut it pretty much all the way back towards the sole. So I'm gonna stitch it, and I, I just added that extra piece, just to hold it in a lot tighter and more secure. That way, it's not just the old lining and the outer, outer leather, because this is also, this also can give away, this the, the piece of leather. So, I'm gonna take all three pieces, the welt, my needle, and some thread, and some wax thread, and what I'm going to do is follow the same holes right there. You see, I'm going to follow those same holes and use that as a guide to stitch on my new welt. So, it starts, it starts on the other side. Alright, so you see that, that little groove right there? That's what I'm going to stick my needle into. But first, before I do that, before I forget, I'm going to take and taper it down. And then, hold on, okay. Oh, let's see, where was I? Just taking the leather welt. I skived that side down. That way when it comes to this part, it's not just a sudden cut, it kind of smooths down into what will be the midsole, I believe. Or not the midsole. We're gonna we're gonna create a leather rand. And I'll explain that once I get to that part. So I'm gonna stick the needle into the welt as such, and it comes out on that side of the, the the bump raise or whatever you want to call it. Alrighty. And then following this hole, I'm going to actually hold on. It's a possibility that I may need to do a little bit further up. Actually Okay, well, at this part near the back, I'm going to have to go a little bit further up than the holes because I guess how that shoe was made. Alrighty, so let me show you. You can see I got the leather welt, all three pieces, and it's coming out of the gemming there. Then we take. Our thread, put it onto that hook, which the needle has, and pull it through. All right, so now I got it going all the way through. So I'm gonna pull that out about an arm's length, and then I'm going to go to the next hole. Alright, so I got through all the same layers. Now you take this side, you make a loop, just like you did, hook it through, hook it onto the needle, and use the needle to pull it out. Alright, now you got a hook or a loop on this side. Then you take this one, which is the length that we pulled out, you feed it through there, and you pull this side again, and you pull it tight. 
and now you got it stitched. You just do that all the way around the chute, and then you got a Goodyear welted shoe now instead of a stitch down construction. This now will allow the boot to be resold not only this time but also multiple times down the road. It does change the look of the shoe a little bit because instead of the, the leather uppers going down and out, you're just gonna have to go down and you have a separate piece right there. I'm gonna do this all the way around the shoe and then eventually we're gonna have a um, welted shoe and we're gonna be ready to put the leather rand on which is a piece that goes right here, it stops right here, right? And then we'll put a midsole and the new sole on. And then we should be good to go after they to put the heel on. So I'll get this stitched on. So we got the welts on. See, it completely changes the look of the shoe. And so the last thing what we gotta do is cut all this excess off, which we'll go ahead and do now. There we go. Alrighty, we are getting there. Almost there. I think all the hard part's done. Next is just Filling this in corp now because there is a cavity instead of earlier when there was no cavity. There was just a, um, it was just flat. So there was no cavity earlier. Now that there is, we have to fill it. Alright. And then start gluing our layers on. finished boot. So, there you go. Now, we got to fill this in with cork, put our shank in, make a heel rand, put a leather midsole, and then we are ready for the sole, the heel. Yeah, yeah. And we'll have a finished boot ready to go another thousand miles, or however long the last. Alright, so we got the, um, heel rand nailed on all the way around and what that does is when you have the welt up to the heel rand it makes it look like the welt is all one piece that goes around but it's not and that makes it it gives you just that edge I'll trim this but we're about to put a leather midsole on right now Let's see if I can, there we go leather midsole we'll stitch that on and we'll get ready for the sole so here's the midsole. It's just a thin piece of leather. When I measured this, it was tight. It was close. And it looks like I got it. So let's just go ahead and take our hammer. Press it together. Alrighty. So now I'm just going to go through and press the edges down. Alright. There you go. Our Goodyear welted shoe is coming together. Now I'm going to trim it, stitch it on, get ready for the sole, the heel base, and the heel. Okay, so see, got it sanded, marked it where I got to stop and finish. Here's what it looks like so far. Now I'm only going to stitch the welt. I'm not going to stitch this back part. So I'm going to go from there all the way around to there. 
That's why I have it marked where it starts and stop. And then we'll nail the back again and then go from there. Wish me luck. Okay, I think I got it now. Let's try this again. it skipped a few and it skipped some in the back too so I'm gonna have to unthread this start over again all right let's try this maybe take a little slower this time but let's try this one more time Try this hopefully one last time. I think I've showed you guys the sole that we're putting on this. Let me heat up the glue real quick. After you put a couple coats on there and you let it dry, you have to heat it up to reactivate the glue so that when you put the two pieces together, they stick. Um, this was the old sole. Now there's nothing wrong with this sole. I had it. I have this sole too. If I wanted to put that back on there, but I want to customize these, customize these, and kind of beef them up. So this is the sole we're doing. It's like a full lug pattern sole. It's mainly for dress, not dress, but work boots. So what we're gonna do is just line up the toe. I would like to make sure that the Vibram logo's in the center. It's kind of crooked, but I guess that's all right. And then take the hammer and just hammer it on. Okay, this is my press, full press. You adjust this up and down according to what boot you have. These come out. You have your right and left sizes. You just put that in there. Slide it in. Adjust it in here. I like to put it down as far as it'll go. And then it uses air, it presses it down. And then leave it on there. Applies pressure evenly across the whole shoe. Then once the front is done, we could flip it around to this one, and this does the heel. After that, we're ready to trim and add the heel base, which is a this is a leather heel block. And then after we do that, is going to be the matching heel top lift. So that's going to be looking pretty cool. Alrighty, guys, we are just about done with this job. We got the new leather heel base on, and we're about to put the rubber top lift on. Now, 
you notice it's a little small. You can see there's a gap right there at the back. But believe it or not, that is intentional. And I will show you why. First of all, though, now that we've got that hammered on, you see all those holes? Those have washers built into the heel. Now, we use what's called a, a rubber heel nail. Let's see? It's got just a little rivets in there, and they got... I dropped it. It's got a, that cone head that goes in and pushes down the... Um, the washer. So I like to start from the back. And just go in each one of those holes. Okay, now that we got this on, the heel lift, top lift, or up heel, whatever you want to call it, and it's balanced. Do you all remember the really long nails that were holding the heel base on? Let's see. This one. So that one, they when they had this on there, they put it this way. I went ahead and put nails in going this way. It's kind of hard to tell. You can see all those nails in there. Those are threaded nails, and they're going through here into the base and into the, the heel. Now, that is what this is for. This covers all those nails gives you a little bit of padding on the back so you don't feel that. Um, now we're going to go ahead and trim and sand this. And so instead of sanding it flat, what I'm going to do is try to put a curve in it. So it's kind of hard to tell. So instead of it being flat, flat, like this, it's going to be curved like this all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. and. It's better to show you than try to explain to you. So, here we go. Alright, so we got it all trimmed up. And you can see, it's very slight, slight, but there's a kind of a little curve going down. It's not perfectly strat, strat, flat. But, I think it, I, I don't know what this is called, but I kind of like it on certain boots. This boot, I thought it might look good. Um. But last thing I want to do before I go ahead and finish this, because this is just a rough sanding. So you can see I got nails in the heels. I got nails in the waist. We stitched the midsole on. And then the only thing is this front part. Now, if I could, I would stitch it, but I don't have the right machine to stitch it. So I'm going to add little brass screws going in between each little... I guess lug, what you want to call it. And this will just tie everything together. I don't think I don't think it's gonna come unglued, but it's better safe than sorry. Hold on. Yeah, I say better safe than sorry. Okay, there you go. Brass screws holding the front. And so last thing to do is do a fine sanding, buff it, last minute conditioners, and then we are good to go. Wow, what a big difference. I will see you guys at the reveal. Okay, we are done with these boots. And I love, I just love the way they turned out. Now, yeah, they do they do have wrinkles and rolls in them, but that's just from being worn. But I think uh, they came back even stronger than before. 
with that new welt on there that we added. That can be replaced as many times as you, as you want, really. Honestly, there's really no limit. So, you all remember what it looked like before? Well, I didn't touch these ones. Remember? Had those Vibram mini lug soles. Not mini lug, I don't I think these are 430 soles, but matching heels. It's not a bad boot. They weren't in bad shape, other than the stitch down welt was pretty thin and pretty old. And this one that had that rip in there that we secured, remember, all the way around by putting a thin piece of leather in there in between the lining and the outer leather. So, you know, with the natural finish on the edge. So, like I said, I think these turned out pretty cool. What do y'all think? See? There you go. Well, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, and comment what you guys think. And yes, I do take mail-in repairs. So if you want to mail in a pair of boots, shoes, dress shoes, um, whatever you want to get fixed, go ahead and contact me. I'll include my Instagram, my Instagram, and my email in the bottom, uh, in the description. So go ahead and contact me if you have any questions. Thank you guys for watching again. Stay tuned for more to come. God bless.